Hello, everybody. I am Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is So I'm Watching Shining Veil, vale, Season 1, Episode 1. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. Welcome to Casa de Phelps. Casa de Phelps. Yeah. A little bit of a slow start for yeah. me. This show has a lot of, D shares a lot of DNA with Murder House. Yep. American mm -hmm. Horror Story Murder House. My biggest critique thus far is I've yet to identify what the story we're telling is, okay. what the arc is, and I'm a little put off by the characters. Okay. With the exception of Jake, the son, okay. I don't think anybody's particularly likable, and even that I think is generous. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> for, he just hasn't done anything. Well, he seems... I'm I'm rooting for him. He seems a little bit. No, that's fine. A little bit underdoggy, sure. and he got me with that. He wouldn't even make eye contact with her. That was so funny. So uh, it's also a little bit scarier than I was thinking it was going to be. Oh, I kind of I thought it would be a little scary. Okay, well I thought it'd be a little scary, but it got it got me with the jump. Yeah. So I love Courtney Cox. I am a huge. I was a Monica sympathizer. Yep. I love Scream. I love Cougar Town. I was huge on Cougar Town. This is a very strong flavor. I don't know that she needs to be quite this at risk of being sexist shrewish. Sure, I get that. It also is like, it's so far not doing anything new. She cheated in the city, so they moved to the country. Um, it's all a little... Greg Kinnear, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm there with him, especially when he kind of snapped a little bit at the end sure all of this this sounds very negative i do have um i I'm, have faith and i have a feeling that it's i have it, hope it feels like a slow start because we should have watched both episodes together maybe but yeah. i have hope i don't know that i have faith but i will say that uh there is a jolt of charisma in the last 30 seconds with the introduction of mira sorvino as rosemary and so i'm thinking that this, to your point, the mm -hmm. second episode. Yeah. I'm hoping that that makes it a little bit clearer. Yeah. I really like Gay, the daughter. Yeah. She played a very similar, uh, very funny character on Dickinson. And you said you saw her in something? She was in I'm Thinking of Ending Things okay. last year. But in a very, very tiny, small part. I want from her. I want more than what we've seen. I think that there's the capability of that. Yeah. Uh, we have Jan, who is Marin Dungy. Yeah, uh, Always the right choice. Cam. Marin. Cam. Yeah. Oh, it must have um, autocorrect because I absolutely yeah. wrote Cam. Yeah, Cam. Always the right choice, Marin Dungy. Yep. We love Marin Dungy so much. Marin Dungy stands <laughs> over here. And She's so good in everything. She is Pat's. I found it strange that she called her Trish. Trisha or Trish and everyone else is calling her Pat or Patricia. Yeah. I thought that was strange. But she is Pat's manager. So Pat is a novelist. She wrote a, a very successful book, Cressida Undone. Yeah, like um, erotica, essentially. She is claiming it was like a, a deep emotional examination of a woman in crises or whatever. And Probably. it's like, it's porn. Probably. It's fine. You, it, own your erotica. It, sure. But but there is there is a judgment. There is weird stigma and judgment. Yeah. Cheryl and Finn. Yeah. <laughs> I actually I like her, but... <laughs> She's also great. I also love her. I didn't love Twin Peaks, but I do like Sherilyn Fenn a lot. And I mentioned while we were watching it that I know her. Like the first thing I ever remember seeing her in was she had a run on Dawson's Creek where mm -hmm. she was like Pacey's boss at the restaurant and she goes absolutely batshit. So I think she's great. She feels equally batshit in this. Mm -hmm. And again, like you said, like the realtor from Murder House, she mm -hmm. feels a lot like that. It's very and, and the fact that it's coming on so strong as like the, not a ripoff, but it like it's so murder house makes me want makes me interested to see where we're going yeah. to go or mm -hmm. what we're going to do. Because Pat wrote Cressida and Dunn 17 years ago. She's trying to write a separate Cressida Reawakens or something. Was that what it was something called? Something like Reborn. Reborn. Or something there like you that, go. Yeah. She's trying to write her second book. She's behind it. It's the standard. It's literally what yeah. you're thinking. And it seems like either Rosemary or the house is possessing her in some fashion. Yeah, also, uh, Terry is already possessed for sure. That's what I said. I said, how did you know that? He ha They've been there a day and a half and he's chopped wood four times. Four different times he said, I'm going to go chop some wood. Okay, did he? Okay, yeah. I didn't pick up on that because you were like, well, whatever he's doing, which 
the reveal he was chopping wood. Yeah. But it is a mountain. So much wood. It is a mountain of she wood. She goes outside and she's like, Jesus, Terry. <laughs> it's so much wood. That's where I like Courtney Cox. Yeah. That delivery, yeah. that scene. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And so I think that's what I want is I, I think I would, I think I desire a little bit more wickedness from the sense of I humor. I think it, it could. It I could, think it could. It could lean a little more comedic. So far it's not going as comedic as I thought it was mm-hmm. going to. Especially with these like powerhouse women that are in this. So like, we I'm, have I'm anxious. We have a potential of three ghosts in play already. Yeah. There's Rosemary, there's the little girl, and then there's the neighbor. Valerie. Okay. Played by Susan Park. Although I'm not I mean I believe but I'm not convinced that she's not just also a weird neighbor or just a weird neighbor. She might be just, <laughs> just a, a weird, weird neighbor. It's possible. But I'm curious to see that a very, very good, very nice production. Uh, mm-hmm. Mercifully, it's a half hour. I think that will. Yeah, I think that will bode in its favor. We have a ugly little dog, ugly yeah. bitch. <laughs> I'm not into it. So I'm anticipating something terrible Named happening Roxy. to the dog. Yeah. I liked the running joke with the deer, deer. punctuated because the third time he said it, I was like, okay, this is starting to get yeah. not as much. Because she's like, okay, the first time she's like, there, she. She grabs the steering wheel to try to get him to steer out of the way because there's a little girl with a like balloon in the middle of the street. And he's like, it was probably just a deer. And she was like, I know what a deer looks like. And so then later she sees Mira Servino in the window. And ten feet above ground. Ten feet above, and he's like, he's like, it was probably just a deer. And she was like, ten feet above ground. And he was like, well, it was it couldn't have been a handsome woman or whatever. And <sighs> She just was like, I'm getting a little annoyed that you don't think I know what a deer looks like. <laughs> but I think punctuated by the actual deer. The actual deer at the end. I, yeah. I think that, that that worked. We also have like, she's got a family history of depression and her mom apparently went bonkers. So but she said psychotic, yeah. which is the thing. And she's on medication now yeah. that the male therapist gave her. I was concerned when the therapist they were seeing was a male. I was like, mm. the the marriage counselor yeah, that they were seeing was a man. Yeah. <laughs> Not saying men can't be, but the optics of yeah. this situation, I was like, you should right. be talking to a woman. I w- kind of want to see the handyman again. We got a couple glimpses. <laughs> so his name is Jonathan Higginbotham. Yeah. Um, he was handsome. But I don't know. I like mm. it's interesting because they're going out here to like sort of like rebuild their family and everything. And it's like a very classic, you know one of the parents cheated so they have to like leave everything behind and whatever but like terry is not doing any of it right Mm -hmm. he's like he's trying too hard he's going too intense he's like the kids leave dinner well it's just like gender swapped frequently it's it's the husband and the wife is trying to hold the family together so in that regard i appreciate that that. is interesting and it's the stuff like that that i'm curious to see where we end up going yeah with the show but he just is like let's make love and it's like first of all that's not the correct wording. For Did he really? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, he was like, let's make love in the like living room or whatever. That's not the correct wording for your situation. He then proceeds to start taking off all of his clothes. Presumably they haven't had sex since she had sex with the handyman. So it's like, you need to do it angry first, which is like remove the uh, clothes that you need to remove only. It's like he was going, he was trying to make love to her. That is not what is needed in this moment. You're bringing <laughs> yeah, I'm just You're bringing Terry, and then what? <laughs> like, that like so threw me for a loop because every minute of that scene, I was like, no, not like, well, not like this. So we watched this with your husband, and he was like, they're in communal area, and you were like, those kids are not, not coming, coming back, back downstairs. downstairs. And I was like, that's true. <laughs> it, it it is it is a house. I, it is terrifying. I don't know how because she even made a comment where she was like, I don't remember it looking this scary. Yeah. So I'm curious what degree of uh, haunting, of spooking, spooky sure. are we going for? I also, bold move for her to be like, I'll be writing in the attic. And I'm like, are you cleaning it out first? There. Also, this is apparently like 10 times as big as your apartment in Brooklyn. There's not another room with like natural light and not a vaulted ceiling that you can sit in. Well, I also want to know what the seemingly purposeful employment of St. George and the Dragon, the stained glass. Oh, that's St. Yeah. George and the Dragon. So I'm kind of like, what story are we telling here? Yeah, interesting. So, basically, very tepid start, but I'm curious. And I definitely, I'm going to give it, I think we're we're just covering it. So yeah. I'm going to give mm-hmm. it more. Um, I hope to be 
uh, I hope to like it. Yeah. I hope that will. I hope to be drawn in a little bit mm-hmm. more. So I think the pieces are there. I just think they need to be put into place. I agree. Yes. So yeah. and uh, I we are loving this Mira Sorvino song. A song. Give us more Mira Sorvino Academy Award winner Mira Sorvino. We love to see it. Yeah. So more, more, more. And she seems to be doing a thing. Yeah. So that's always I'm excited. Always fun. So okay, we're gonna watch the second episode. Bye.